up the ash. Yeah, ho, we tapping and passing like magic. No, we not asking, we see it, we grab it. Diamonds, they flash and go blind when I'm passing. Mask on, I'm clapping, no mask on assassin. Jugging, we snatching all black is the fashion. We not the same, bro, just look at the fabric. It was good, everybody. It's your boy, Kama. Um, we're back with you with another video. Um, it's Victory Monday, man. I'm fourth straight. Victory Monday. And, um, feeling good, man. Feeling good about where we at as a team. Um, this week, this week is like, this video is not gonna be all about the Cowboy. I just wanna talk about some NFL stuff in general, right? Like, but real quick, though, I feel like if we can go to New England next week and get a win, which is not gonna be easy, we have to go in and prepare. That's still Bill Belichick. That's still the Patriots. They still, I mean, we still a master disguise. We still gotta find out on defense. We still gotta find go in there and find a way to win. If we can find a way to win next week and going into our bye week five and one, it would be the perfect case scenario because getting Collins back, Collins back, we get Collins back, Gallup back, Kelvin Joseph back, D Law come back in a few in a uh, couple of weeks after that, I believe. Um, Donovan Wilson and the one who was I just started safety comes back. Neville Gallimore will finally be at a hundred percent and I think that bodes well going into the going into the middle of the season basically. That would be what the bye week week seven, week eight. So that would be a perfect scenario to try to jock for a playoff position because when a division Winning the division, one thing about this team, right? I feel different about this team that in previous years, I always didn't want no first round buy or was afraid to because we come out rusty due to the Jason Garrett era and everything of that nature. But this year, honestly, I'm not the more home games for us, the better because I feel like we deadly at home. We that's one thing as a Cowboy fan that people don't we lose sight of. We never really had home field advantage. Like our stadium has always been so big that most would say it was never a thing scared to go play in Dallas. And you know what I'm saying? But like now, like watching these first three home games, the stadium's been like rocking, man. Like so I would love to see you keep pushing division first and get as high a C as we can and let's just take it from there. But um yeah, man, so last night, Kansas City takes a a beating, man. They took a beating. There's no other way to put it. Um, by um, Buffalo, 38-20. to 20. But one thing I would say about that is um, coming into this year, I know a lot of people thought I was crazy, but I never thought – I didn't have high expectations for Kansas City coming into this year, me personally, anyway, because – I felt like they didn't do enough to their team. You know what I'm saying? I felt like one of the Kansas City flaws, what we see with a lot of teams that make that, make it to the mountaintop. Um, you feel like, as long as we keep bringing back our nucleus, let's run it back. I feel like in the NFL, more so than any sport, you can't run it back. You can't just keep running it back because things don't always play out the exact same. You know what I'm saying? Like, you always have to move with the times. And, like, if you look at Kansas City, right, even though they made the upgrades on the old line and things of that nature, um, Mahomes was still running for his life, majority of the snaps, and still got to get outside the pocket and make things happen and things like that. And you still got you still got the same issue. So, Lair, to me, I don't think it's the answer at running back. I don't think he has the power to really – and force the running game. The defense to me is just atrocious. Like if you look at if you look at Kansas City, right? They're two and three right now. If you switch Kansas City defensive roster, well our defensive roster, you will be saying just on paper, not seeing any games, everybody be asking who are we going to stop this year? Like how are we going to compete this year with the high power offenses? Because Kansas City off defense is really not good. It hasn't been good. I feel like they've been should have upgraded. But it's like when they, I think when teams have success, 
they tend to ignore their glaring weaknesses because it was good enough in the previous years. But like, I don't, me personally, I don't believe that that was the right move. I think what happened yesterday, Buffalo was, as of right now, Buffalo was clearly the better team by uh, a nice margin over Kansas City. I don't think that was a fluke or anything like that. It's the change of the guard, man. Like when, like teams have their shelf life, and and I think they might be reaching theirs. Like if you look at their team now, they got a couple of players that you read on the roster that jumps out to you. Like you got Pat Mahomes, maybe the best QB in the game, unquestioned. You got Tyreek Hill, who's a, arguably a top 10, top 15 wide receiver. Kelsey, who's arguably the top tight end in the game. Then you got on defense, you got Honey Badger, you got um, Chris Jones. But outside of that, you got, outside of that, you got Miko Hartman, who's a what, um, role player. You got Robinson, who's okay. Like, these are not people that people are going to jump out the window to sign if they became available today. That's just what it is. Compared to the other lethal offenses, even in the AFC, like, what it do is to stack up. If you look at somebody like Justin Hubert with Austin Eckler out the backfield. Then you got Keenan Allen. You got Mike Williams. You got Jared Cook. You got, like, you got Darius Guyton, I think his name is. Like, you got people that Buffalo from Stephon Diggs to, to Knox. Then you got Cole Beasley. Then you got even the man you saying just they added. You got two running back Like, the times have changed and have moved along. I think Kansas City and Andy Reid got too complacent, and I think that's coming back to bite them now. Um, originally, I know everybody had that as a game on our schedule that we should lose, but honestly speaking, if we go on there as, as, as our roster constructor right now, as they defense the roster constructor right now, of course it's Pat Mahomes, so of course it, Yeah, but... If we were to go in there with how they defense constructed versus how our offense is constructed on the fact that we're going to be getting healthy at the right time, I honestly don't see what they're going to do on defense, how they're going to stop us, and how they're going to make it a – of course, they offense is dangerous, but how are they going to make it a, a, a struggle? Because it's like what we could do to them or what the problems we present is going to be they – they're not allowed to get three and outs and things of that nature turnovers because – I feel like the game could get ugly, man. But you know, never sleep. I'm never sleeping on them because I think that's gonna be a good test. But right now, I couldn't be more proud of my team. There's no team in the NFC more important than the NFL. That I feel like on any given Sunday, we can't hang with, we can't go out and play and beat on any given Sunday. Just vice versa. I'm not saying nobody can't beat us and we unstoppable, but I feel I feel good about this team. Better about this team that I felt in a long time. So it is what it is. But y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. I remember like and subscribe. It's your boy comments. Salute.